I'm going to welcome our moderator for our next panel, who is uh, Ruth Falquina, the co-founder and CEO of Estado Latente. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to this stage, Ruth. Thank you so much. Yep. There's a, a moderator for our panel. Welcome, Ruth. Muchas Thank you so much. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Gracias, gracias. Over here. Buen día. <laughs> so if you, if you would like to welcome the rest of the... Um, should, I, should I invite them or do you want to do it? No, I can do it. Okay. You? So, okay. hello, everyone. I'm Ruth Falcana, and I will be moderating this incredible panel. So please come to the stage to Elena Gonzalez Blanco, Global Head of Digital Wealth Management and Insurance and Bad, and Bad Santander. Our next speaker will be Ignacio Albert, Global Director of New Ventures at Telefonica, please. Thank you. And Alejandro Gutierrez Bolívar, CEO, CEO of Ladorian. So, shall I start? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. Welcome to the panel, How AI Impacts People's Lives. I'm very excited to be moderating this panel with such an incredible colleagues. <laughs> and uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Ruth Falkina. I'm the CEO of Estado Latente, a techno-creativity agency. I'm also co-founded Spain AI, a non-profit uh, organization whose objective is to democratize AI and to generate a great impact of society. I'm also uh, co-founded uh, the AI Gang, we are a collective and artistic project. Uh, we create, uh, co-create crypto art, fine art, and video art, and also doing my PhD about the impact of artificial intelligence on branding. Um, I'm not alone at the stage. As you can see, I have incredible colleagues. And thank you so much, uh, so Savin, for having us. And let us be inspired by such an incredible colleagues, uh, startups, and entrepreneurs. So, in a minute, we are going to know their point of view about today's topic. So, let's face today's topic. AI is everywhere. Every app that you use, a robot shows us the place that we want to eat, uh, the place that we want to travel, or the things that we want to buy. When we e-commerce, a robot shows us reference based on our preference. So, AI is going to transform the way that we collaborate, connect, or the way we live. But at the same time, we are facing so many challenges as society, people, and citizens and consumers. AI has a diversity challenge. AI has an ethical challenge. And AI has a creativity challenge. As a person involved in ideas industry, I see this new co-creation era. Uh, like a, like I, I like to consider the AI like the new muse of 21th century. We are living a new co-creation era where the artificial intelligence enhances human inspiration and boosts creativity. As humans, we are uh, uh, jumping into a new era, than, uh, and AI is giving us the opportunity to express ourselves as we have never seen before. And also, in terms of collaboration, we can see how humanistic profiles and exciting profiles work together. On top of that, AI is an exponential technology. So we are building tomorrow's technology with today's technology. So our future seems quite unpredictable. But the truth is that the decision that we make as society today, we will impact tomorrow's people's lives. I was reading a few days ago, as part of my PhD, the last book of Kay Foley, uh, 2041, and he says that in 20 years' time, it's about the time that we are going to see a full benefit of AI on society. So, Elena, what do you think? <laughs> How will AI impact people's lives? Thanks a lot, Ruth. That's a wonderful question that it's not easy to answer. So, I will give my perspective, my perspective as a linguist, as a background, because artificial intelligence has a lot to do with language. So, what we are trained to do is that machines imitate human behavior, and imitate human behavior has a lot of different angles. We are trying to imitate image, we are trying to imitate vision, but how people speak and how machines can reproduce this, it's really an amazing challenge that has not been solved yet. <laughs> I really enjoy when people think that artificial intelligence has an own life and can do things by itself and can cheat the world and transform everything. 
Artificial intelligence is not so clever yet. There is a super big challenge in training artificial intelligence. We have wonderful and powerful tools, yes. I was working at the university for many years and I'm still leading a couple of research projects. And one of the most important challenges of artificial intelligence is to teach machines to speak. If you have Alexa or Google Homes at home, it's really difficult to keep a conversation for more than two minutes. And two minutes is already a lot if you think more about what's the weather like today or how to drive here or there. But the challenge is there. So machines are learning very quick. And we are at a moment where artificial intelligence was created in the 50s of two centuries ago. But it has not been possible to be performing yet. So now is the moment where the technology has become mature enough to face the new challenges. And this is starting to transform the industry. So when we think about artificial intelligence, we don't have to think only about chatbots or machines. We have to think about how we can use these technologies to really transform our industries, to see how we can transform how we understand documentation, for example, in legal or contracts or everything, how we can use this to understand the, the things where we speak and how this can be used to transform different sectors. So, for example, now I'm working in banking, and artificial intelligence is everywhere. Everywhere when we speak, where we have language and we have images, we can use artificial intelligence to change the way that we have worked traditionally. With insurance, it's a lot of the same. We have started to process documents to understand our customers and to use data to change the way in which things have been done. So, my message here is, now it's the moment, because artificial intelligence has become real, and what I want to do is to change the feeling that people have, which is mostly fear and uncertainty about artificial intelligence, because we have an opportunity in front of our hands. And there is a big opportunity in languages too, and in languages like Spanish, which is the next challenge to make how artificial intelligence speaks in now languages that are not English. So let's work for there, because the opportunity is there. And in the next five years, everything will be transforming our lives in every single thing that we do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. Such an interesting insight. And I, I, I have a, a headline, the time is now. Of so course. it's an extraordinary time to, to play ourselves with artificial intelligence and to enjoy ourselves with this technology. So our next speaker will be Ignacio. So Ignacio, what do you think about how AI will transform people's lives? Yes, I, I totally agree with uh, Elena's uh, messages. I think that uh, Today, we are all immersed in these uh, product, digital products that have uh, digital processes that are supported with uh, artificial intelligence. For example, when we request for a cab uh, with Uber, they have a platform that, with algorithms, uh, selects the best uh, pricing model, balancing supply and demand, and also the best route for the taxi driver. In the health sector, we have lots of cases where uh, preventive medicine is uh, supported <coughs> with in the, uh, artificial intelligence to, to diagnose with images better the, and, and, and help the doctors to better, better care of the, take care of the patients. Uh, there's an interesting startup, sp Spanish startup called Tucubi, that they developed a bot called Lola to assist and uh, senior people to in, in the day-to-day tasks that they have to, to, to take, to take medicines or to, to don't, do, do not feel lonely. And this is all with artificial intelligence. And, and I think that, why now? Because now all the building blocks around uh, this ecosystem are there. The data is everywhere. The talent, there are more data scientists than anywhere. Funds that are investing in these uh, companies and startups. The infrastructure around 5G is coming, fiber cloud computing, edge computing to, to have more processing power and storage power near the decision-making process. Um, so I think this is the right moment. All the companies are willing to provide free services to get us engaged with their products so, so they can collect more information about us and they can improve their algorithms and artificial intelligence just to provide better personalized, contextual, and targeted offers. So I think the moment is, is there. As Elena mentioned, the term artificial intelligence 
was first used in the 50s in the, in the US, in the Dartmouth University. There was a team of, of scientists or of MIT, IBM, Bell Lab, and, and Dartmouth College, where they started to, to think about the, how the machines can learn. And at that time, and through the, till the 80s, all the coding and the programming was focused in defining symbols, uh, rules, so that machines could complete tasks. But in the last years, the evolution has been amazing, because now the machines are starting to learn by themselves, with limited or limited uh, supervisory of, of humans. With all the data sets that they have, they are, they are alone finding the patterns, the insights. Uh, so that's, that's a new, a new a huge step in the progress of artificial intelligence. And uh, as Elena mentioned, we are not there. There's a, a long way to, 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 to go because around uh, mobility and perceptions of emotions, the machines need, need to, to learn a lot. But we are, we are getting there with, mo with this, with this uh, new deep learning and machine learning algorithms that they are using uh, sophisticated systems to find patterns with the data that we can collect. So I'm very, very optimistic as well with artificial intelligence. I think the challenges are around privacy and uh, data security, around ethical, ethical points that you mentioned of, of um, if a machine makes a decision, who's accountable for that decision? So there, there should be a lot of efforts in auditing how machines make decisions. And, uh, but I think that the opportunity is there because all the building blocks are there and we, we need to find a way where humans can complement because the intelligence of humans could be more focused in creativity, problem solving, strategic decisions, and the machines could help us a lot in more tasks that are related to automation or that human beings are, 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 uh, could, could delegate to this, to this machine. So I'm very optimistic with the, with the opportunity and and uh, I think the future is, the, the potential is li unlimited. <laughs> Thank you so much for your insight. I think we all are AI believers in this yeah. panel. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so uh, we see opportunities all around. And as you mentioned, we are in a new era of co-creation, co-working, collaboration. And as Elena said, AI is going to transform the way that we collaborate, create, or, or, or play. No? Thank you very much for your insights. And um, now it's the time of Alejandro Gutierrez Bolívar. He is CEO of La Dorian. So thank you so much for joining the panel. Do you want to share your point of view about how AI will impact people's lives? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, pleased to share with you, Ruth, Elena, Ignacio, this panel. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, well, how AI has impact our life, I mean, we should talk about, we are talking about how we apply this AI to the communication flow when we are in a physical spaces. Uh, at the Dorian, that we are doing is to understand and to uh, uh, take care of the clients where they need to talk with their clients where they are purchasing or experience their brands inside a physical space. When we are talking about sectors or industries where not more than the 80% 80, 80 of their uh, business is done in a physical space, you can imagine supermarkets, fashion stores, gas stations, uh, pharmacies, all these stores are making their business in a in a room, in a physical space, okay? Then how to, con to, to continue and to impact in the communication flow that the brands has with the consumer, with their clients, while they are in a physical store, well, where, where, when they are not looking for a, in, a, in a PC or in a mobile phone, okay? The Dorian that is doing is uh, create a software able to convert these uh, dummy devices, such as TVs or, or uh, speakers or uh, levels, in a uh, real uh, sales assistance or information assistance for, in a personalized way to each client. The, the, the objective is to give the, a personalized experience in a physical world, as you are doing in a, in a, in the, with the banners in, a, in an online world, 
we are doing the same in the physical world. To do that, we are using uh, well-supervised and no-supervised algos. And the idea is to, to bring the into, uh, EA uh, impact through do two important premises for us, which are uh, do it in a reliable way, given the, the, our clients real impact, and also doing it in, in, a, in an ethical way. Okay? Uh, as, as my colleagues has, has mentioned before, uh, the, the, the volume of data that we are managing are so big, are so powerful, that we need to do it in a proper way. We are talking about the future, not only about the present. Doing that, the sources that we obtain data to impact the consumer while they are in the, in the fiscal stores comes mainly for three uh, different sources. The first one, let's say, is a web service or web API lines that we connected with ERPs or with uh, 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 weather uh, connections or stock connections, whatever, okay? This is what kind of line. The other one is machine-to-machine -machine data. It comes from, from the sensor world, IoT world. It is important to see what is happening right now in your, in your, in your store. And the third one comes from the biometric line which comes from the uh, anonymous recognizement of machines that we are capturing gender, age, number of people. With all this data that we are generating is uh, a, 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 the way to impact the client in the right time with the right experience with the right product. The point is that uh, all this, um, let's say, um, uh, uh, recognizement, uh, uh, that lake needs to be audited, needs to be uh, anonymized in order to don't pass the line in terms of uh, RD, uh, GDPR and, and, the, and the rest of the le legislation that this country is given to their citizens. And the point is that uh, we are working with first party data and the 100% of the data needs to be anonymized. That is the guarantee that's guarantee the impact. And taking into account that the, in the physical store, we are talking about, about one too many impact, not one to one to one. Then you need to think about clust cl clustering, about how to make the decision with a group of consumers or with a group of, con of clients. You need to think about which is the best content that satisfies the maximum number of consumers that I have in the store. And that is where the uh, logistic re uh, regression models comes to, to make the magic, to, make the, to, to, to select the right content at the right moment to the right group of to the right consumer. This is the way that we are doing the, the, uh, you know, the, tr the, the, the conversion from uh, dummy devices to smart devices. This is the way that we are ensuring that the impact that the uh, clients are, given, are, are receiving while they are in the physical store are personalized. And this is the way that we are giving the, the companies the reason why to make this targeted content increase their sales at least, or their impact at least a 30% in their turnover. That is, I mean, the, that we are doing. That's, uh, this is that Dorian is doing in the, in the market and in the physical stores. So thank you very much for your impacts and what an incredible work. How are you doing? So guys, imagine, okay, imagine to the future. Imagine that you jump, as Kate fully said, in 2041, <laughs> and we are already there. Imagine that you're jumping, and how you see the future. So, we'll, so how will be the future, the trends, uh, and how AI will impact the future on people's lives in about 20 years' time? So imagine this scenario. I know that it's, uh, it's not a tough, uh, thanks for you guys, because you have the vision, you know the industry, and you know how AI will transform um, every, every aspect of our lives and our industries. So, Elena, I know that you are eager to answer that. <laughs> well, that's uh, an interesting question, because this is a thing that I've thought many times. So, 
when I try to imagine the future, I tend to think about the films that were predicting the future like 50 years ago. And those are amazing, Fahrenheit, and those kind of films that were like thinking about people flying and interacting with mm. computers. And for example, the Space Odyssey, where people mm. used to talk to machines, and machines mm. were able to govern the world and change the things and make decisions. So we are not yet there, as I told you. <laughs> and my thoughts are, future will not be so different, but it will change a lot of things in terms of how AI will interact in our own world. So, we will not be flying or interacting with robots uh, as film sets. I think that the, there is a natural trend to integrate technology and AI in our day-to-day -day life. So when we use our mobile phones or wearables and IoT and these kind of things, so they will be part of our day-to-day -day lives and we will not be doing different things, but we will be doing things better. So that's my thought of the world. So as we have intelligent devices to detect smart traffic to, and to, or to improve our health, that will continue and this will be a, an increasing trend and I think it will be for better. As I told you, I'm very optimistic about the future and I think that the next, not 20 years, the next five years will be incredible in that sense. So let's wait and see. We are privileged to live this moment. <laughs> Thank you so much for your insight. I agree. I think that you, we are living as human beings. AI is giving us the opportunity to express ourselves as we have never seen before. So I agree with you. Mm. Any one of you want to yes, answer? I, I, I have a similar view of, of Elena. I think that three main tra trends are going to accelerate in the next year. One is uh, connectivity and IoT, because every machine will have a sensor that's sending data to the, to the network, and that data could be used to, to improve processes. That, that's one trend. Other trend, for me, very important, is the community. There's a lot of uh, solutions for artificial intelligence that people can uh, access through libraries or co coding, uh, mm -hmm. coding examples. So I think that the, the skills and the talent that are going to, to have more, inf more will grow much, much more in the, in, in the next years. So that's the second trend. And I think that the last trend that we will have new business models that we don't, we don't, uh, we don't have, have uh, right now because the, the business will, will evolve using this data. We, the, we will be, I think, smarter. That, that's my, my belief and my hope, because we, we, we will combine the, the human capacity around uh, censoring emotions, perceptions, and the creativity with this uh, other intelligence more related to um, a huge amount of process, processing power. And uh, we can use these tools to, I hope, to, to create new solutions and new, new business opportunities in the world. Thank you so much. Alejandro, please. For me, the future <laughs> belongs to the cre creativity. I mean, uh, I, I'm still thinking that the content is the king. I mean, the, the point is to create the, the, you know, the right content and the and impactful content to be able to dis be displayed to the consumer while they need it. And this is the part of the EA, but we are still needed the creation process, the, uh, the artist, the, uh, all, all the capacity to bring to the consumer the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the capacity to be surprised. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, uh, back to this uh, action of, of, uh, of creation is the artificial intelligence that, be, that, that brings to the content the capacity to be uh, displayed to the right person at the right moment. But this is the, you know, the, the, the other side of the coin that needs to be done with this ethical that we mentioned before mm -hmm. and with these manners that the consumer uh, accept the, the, the trait. And you know, once said that, uh, I'm still thinking that the human being needs to uh, th have, have still having a lot of things to say, a lot, a lot of things to do, and the creations of content are going to be uh, really, really uh, the future. Uh, for mm -hmm. me, it's sure. I really like your, your insight and, and, and see this future and how AI is transforming the creative process and, and how it enhances human creativity, boosts yeah. inspiration, and how we are going to co-work co and co-create together you know, as a, mm -hmm. a human, machine, machine, human 
team or dupla or triple, I don't know, but how will be the, the future? <laughs> so um, we are approaching the end, and I, I would love that uh, all of you will, sell, uh, will share with uh, the people that it's here and online a headline that, uh, about your today's intervention or the future or something that you, you want to share with uh, the people that is here today. Wow, let me quote uh, a big one for this moment. So, I always like to bring the sentence of Mark Milminski, the co-founder of the Artificial Intelligence Lab. And he said, will robots inherit the, the Earth? Yes, but we will be the parents. So we have a big role there. So let's work together for making artificial intelligence possible in our real world. Thank you. What a nice one. Thank you so much, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Ignacio, do you want to share a quote? Uh, or a headline? <laughs> a headline? My quote would be in the same line that you mentioned before. We need to work to, to get the, be the best of, the, of both worlds. The, the human touch, the human interaction, the human intelligence, and, and the power of machines to process, storage, compute, and provide us with useful information to improve our lives in, in health, in education, in, in climate change, all the challenges that we have in the world, we can use these powerful tools to try to crack and solve these this relevant challenges that we face in this century. Thank you so much. Uh, I would say that, uh, well, we have tons of data around us, around all the business, around all the sectors. I think let's use it, but let's use it in a, in a, in a very sustainable way. And of course, the uh, EA is the way, and let's do it uh, soon and <laughs> faster. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to share mine. <laughs> As I say at the beginning, uh, I, I came from ideas industry, so I. I see the AI as the new muse of 21th century, where the creation possibilities are endless. And I'm so excited to, to co-create in this new future and to solve all these challenges in terms of ethics, in terms of talent, and I'm and, and very passionate about co-create with uh, a scientist, uh, uh, humanistic profiles, and, and made a different duplas or triplas in terms of, of working. And, uh, really interesting things ahead. So thank you so much, guys, for, for all your insights and thoughts. I don't know if we, are, we have questions. If there is an open session for questions or not? Hello? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> you want to ask uh, something to our speakers or to myself? OK? No? All right. So thank you very much for joining how AI will impacts people's lives. Thank you so much. Thank you.